Here we're gonna look at potassium deficiency in tomatoes. We see kind of a great image here of initial onset of a potassium deficiency. We tell you what potassium does in the tomato plant and how to correct uh, or prevent a potential deficiency in your plants. So first off, potassium just in general, what does it do? Why do plants need it? Uh, keep in mind that it is a mobile nutrient, so plants can kind of move or translocate that through the plant. Uh, plants deficient in potassium tend to be less resistant to environmental stresses, diseases, nematode attacks. So this is why it's important for growers to make sure their plants are not becoming potassium deficient. In addition, it can also affect qualities such as sh uh, shape, their color, the vigor, the size of the actual tomatoes. It can actually cause yellow shouldering uh, as well as we see that kind of up here. Activates up to 60 enzymes involved with growth, uh, helps translocate sugars and starches within the plant, increases protein content, maintains trigger pressure, that's water pressure, reduces water loss and wilting. So you can see this is involved in a lot of things. Most notably, as I said, for the marketable fruit, uh, yellow shouldering uh, is one kind of issue that can occur uh, and not allow customers to even pick up your item uh, and to purchase. Now, to better show a deficiency, I chose to grow tomato plants in a hydroponic setup in a greenhouse, uh, which allowed for pr precise control. You're also gonna see a comparison of a control plant that had the optimum rates of all nutrients and then a test plant was potassium deficient. So this kind of shows the image here of the potassium deficient plant. These are the lower leaves. They will start to get a yellowing kind of color to them towards the margins. So we can see that right here, here, and here. And these are the older leaves. So the um, original root, root stock would be all the way to the right of, of the image here, and above me here is kind of the newer growth. So typically those older leaves are impacted first. Uh, they will have the first ones to, sharp, to show this yellowing or this discoloration. So that's important to keep in mind of where you might be seeing the yellowing leaves, where they might be occurring first. If it's the older leaves and towards the margins, you may have a potassium deficiency starting. Now on our older leaves, this kind of shows that newer part of the growth. As I said, they start to get that yellowing first. Now the newer growth may look perfectly fine and normal. So keep that in mind that while they look normal now, if no corrective measures are taken, they will start to exhibit the same yellowing. Uh, so it's important to make sure that you're looking at those older leaves and saying, oh, they're old, they're gonna die anyway. This could be a sign of something progressing through the plant. Notice compared to the control plant, so as I said, the minus potassium to the control, notice the newer growth looks very similar. The green pattern looks the same, but we do not see that yellowing of the leaf margins of the older leaves in the control one that was fed a balanced fertilizer. Now, how to prevent this or how to correct the potential deficiency if you do notice it? Well, keep in mind potassium is important for fruit finishing in the end yield. So it might be something you might see a little bit later in the season or past um, flower uh, fruit set. It tends to be needed in exin, that more mid to late season. Sulfate of potash, 0050, is 50% 50 potassium, typically applied based on a soil test, has a very low salt level, and only adds potassium. So a great product to choose, especially if you can add it to the soil uh, before the plants go in the ground. Potassium chloride is one that's very commonly used, 0061. It's got a greater percentage of potassium, a uh, higher percent of that compared to the sulfate of potash that I mentioned previously, but it does have more salts with it. It's a chloride, so just keep that in mind. Kelp, uh, used by a lot of organic growers, great source of potassium, usually about a teaspoon of powder or two ounces of liquid per gallon can be applied to the leaves. It's organic. However, keep in mind that while it is a source of potassium, it's nowhere near the 50 or 60% of the two previous products. So it's not really concentrated enough to typically correct a deficiency. So just keep that in mind. It's good to kind of supplement and keep the plants going. But if you have a deficiency, uh, it may take a lot, a lot of kelp and um, excessive amounts of kelp almost to that point uh, to correct a deficiency. Uh, so just keep that in mind that while it does have potassium, it's not nearly as concentrated as the other fertilizers that I've mentioned here.